Welcome back to Jenkins Boatworks. I am Chuck Jenkins. In this episode, we get the stations perfected so that the strips will lay exactly fair. Hi everybody, We're getting ready for a snowstorm. Whew, it's cold. We're gonna do some fairing tonight. I've been looking at the um, stations on this canoe and um, I was thinking to try to put the shear plank on tonight. We're not ready. Um, I'll show you here where we've got some of these battens on. And uh, <laughs> welcome to my neighborhood. <laughs> uh, I'll show you where we got some of these battens on <laughs> and uh, where I got a couple of problems. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so in uh, one of the most recent videos, uh, in fact, it just uploaded today uh, fairing and spacing of these stations. Uh, the whole idea was to get these stations all exactly a foot apart from each other and at every different place. So on the sides, up at the top, down at the bottom, just everywhere. In order for this to have the right shape, you want all these frame stations to be as close to a foot apart uh, as is possible. And in some cases, the plywood's bent just a little bit. And there's places where we're off a 16th or an eighth of an inch. But for the most part, uh, we've got these all equidistant. Now, you see these battens that I've got running here both on both sides. And these are at a specific distance up from the shear. Okay, I found this little piece of, of uh, wood that I was using. It's just um, a little piece of cedar. It's about six inches long. And what I was doing is I took it and I measured where I wanted my batten to be by just taking it from the shear, which is the very bottom of the frame, up and then put the batten on there. And I did that on each of these stations. So like here in the middle, um, the, the, the shear line is actually at its most shallow for the canoe. The shear line increases in height as you get up to the stems. So in other words, up here um, at station 15 here, the shear line is much closer to the um, to the baseline, the butt line. And so then it increases as it goes up. And you can, so, so I tried to make this batten equidistance from the shear line. Because when we put the first strip on, the shear strip, I'm going to try to follow the bottom of each of these molds. You can really see how it drops off going forward there. And the batten does too. You can see it going down. So, my simple little trick was then just to use, I'm sorry, it's hard to hold the camera and do this, but to use this, this little stick and make sure that I was equidistant at each, at each place. Um, and so part of the reason for doing that is because I want to see what the shape's going to look like, but it also gives me an idea if we've got any issues. And this side looks really good. It's this side over here where I've got a couple, really just one struggle. And I, I think you're going to be able to see it. Um, there's frame um, 13 and frame 12 and then 11. Okay, so coming up this way, can you see where it dents in there? Right in the center of the picture? On, on 13, it's dented, right? Here, 
it goes in. I'm gonna have to build this up just a little bit. I can do that. I've got a whole bunch of, see there you can really see it, it's bent. And, and you just have to look at the overall shape of the thing and see how it's going. Um, let me get around the other side of this workbench. But anyway, let's go back and look back up there. I think you can really see it here. See how it dents in up there? Right there? We can't have that. So we're gonna fare that out. We're gonna build that frame up so that we don't have that little indentation. Because we just did all the ripping of strips yesterday. Here is the end of, well, that's a 12 foot one by six Western red cedar that we ripped and then we kept them all uh, in order as they came off of the saw and then taped them together. You can see that we got all the grain patterns matched up and we did a lot of sawing. We got um, 16s up on the shelf up here. I've got three packs of 16s up on that shelf and there's about either 14 or 15 strips in each one. We got one set of, or no, two sets of 18s here. These run the whole length of the table. That. And a couple of eights and a couple of tens. So we've got quite an assortment of strips. And um, anyway, but the point of that then is that I've got all these off cuts over here with some really thin pieces of cedar. So it's going to be pretty easy for me to find pieces that I can make those make up the difference on that places where I need the rest of these, need the rest of these frames fared out. So you can see that dent right there. We're going to fix that. Once we do that, we're going to be ready to start stripping this thing. Okay, so we got this problem area right here. I have a feeling that when I unscrew this, this batten will come out and lay the way it wants to. Uh, so let's see if, let's see if that's true. Yeah, see, it just fixed itself. Well, that's all fine and good, but pull it in just a little bit. Let's see if we can do that and play with it a little bit. I got these little cleats. We'll use these when we're putting the strips on. But I could use it right now and pull that in just a little bit where I can see what it looks like. Now what do we look like? I got a couple of these off cuts uh, from, from mill and strips. I'm just gonna, this one's a little bit thicker. This is maybe um, 3 16 This is, this is thin. Maybe, maybe an eighth, maybe less. So anyway, I'm, for just for the moment, I'm gonna cut off a couple of pieces and just go play with them. up with a couple of pieces. Right, see what that looks like. It's 
Still needs to come out just a bit. Just a hair. Which means I'm going to have to have something that's a little bit thicker than that. Actually, like this. I think if I cut it to the width of the, of the station, so cut it off like this, I may be able to uh, bend it a little bit easier. We're not in a terrible bending spot right there, and I don't really want to monkey with much of it the rest of the way. We'll check the fairness of the rest of it just with the, with the batten, like that. And I'm, I'm okay with all that. It's just when we get down to there, it bends in. Even there's good. Well, yeah, we need something all the way down to the shear. So I've made a couple of little battens here. They're very thin, um, but they're just uh, about as big as they need to be. And so I'm gonna just put them on there like that. Now see, I got that sanded down to where it's not gonna cause me, I'm gonna actually have to feather that out just a little bit more so we don't have a lump right there. But what I can do when I do that, see, I'm just, that's fitting right up in there. Now, if I push that in there, that batten's laying pretty fair. Let's look at it from the distance. I can still see it. You know, that'd be one of those deals where I'd be the only person that could ever see it. But I want that out about like that. So that's why I've got two of these. We're going to just feather this out on the sander even just a little bit more. Stick that one up in there like that. I believe that will do it. <clears throat> All right, so I basically got two pieces here, and this is just paper thin practically, and then this one's longer, and so I'm gonna put them on there like that, and then that gives me the ability to bend those pretty much however I want. I left it a little bit thicker down here for the shear line, but I'm good with this. So pull this out of here. I'm just gonna tape these on here. I want that all the way down here to the shear line, so I'm going to tape that. Make sure I didn't get that lower than the bottom of the frame. So see, I'm good with that. I'll tape that on there. And I got that thing so thin up there at the top that it just flows right on into that curve. By the time I put the other piece of tape on here, you're not going to know it all. Now see, that's still, see we still need just this little extra bit. Right there. 
And that's going to allow that to lay fair. Just like that. We'll double check on uh, above and below it and just make sure that we got it the way we want it. I'm not gluing it because um, if it's wrong, it's a lot easier to take it off of here and readjust it. But I think we're going to be real close. I tried to do it with a thicker piece, but I couldn't get it to bend. It broke. So... I'm good with that. In my previous experience, I found that you're going to notice little imperfections and um, I think at a point you just have to say it's as good as I can get it or it's as good as it's as close close enough. I remember when I did the Bob special, there was a, a piece a cedar strip that we were putting around and um, I don't remember exactly how it happened but somehow in the bending of it or when I was trying to get it just right or whatever it cracked down the middle about 18 20 inches long and basically split the strip but I had strips below it and strips above it already installed and um, I was just horrified because I'm sure I was gonna have to take all of it apart um, and I got some wood glue and put it all back together and got that strip glued back together. Um, and I have to look extremely hard at that canoe to be able to see where that is. Nobody else would ever know <laughs> that that's there. Um, so the, the builder's eye is absolutely going to be the most critical. Unless you just got something glaring, which, you know, even the way we were, it probably wasn't glaring. Um, it was to me. Um, so, at least now I'll be able to sleep tonight. All right. See you next time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.